Hi, so we're back in Cubase, and this is uh, the Wivy Wallander Instruments Virtual Player, the professional edition with uh, all the libraries, so we're, we're very lucky to have all of them at our disposal. Um, I've been asked to show uh, how we would maybe use the Rolly Seaboard Rise with a polyphonic uh, Wivy Ensemble. Um, it is very possible. There are a few limitations which I'll mention, um, but it is it is very possible. Um, remember, the Wivy transmits. Uh, sorry, the Wivy receives on all sixteen channels, but it assigns individual channels to individual instruments. So you would load up trumpet one on channel one, trumpet two on channel two, trumpet three on channel three, etc. And maybe flugel horn on four, and then go down to the the bass ones towards the ends. So you could create a really nice ensemble, but of course they'd respond to different MIDI channels if you wanted to do it that way. Or of course you could respond to the same MIDI channel. Um, to use the rolly effectively, you want each instrument on a different MIDI channel. But the limitation with that is that the rolly doesn't necessarily always send the note of F to MIDI channel one, for instance. It may send note of F to MIDI channel 2 if you're already playing another instrument on MIDI channel 1. So you can create ensembles, but you can't always predict which note has been played by which player. So if you want to do, for instance, a flute, piccolo, bassoon ensemble, I cannot guarantee that the lowest note will always play the bassoon if you're playing on multiple channels. If you want to do that kind of thing, you can set up your uh, standard keyboard and the standard arrange function that Wivy has built into it to be able to arrange your instruments. And maybe I'll go through a tutorial on that later, although I think Arnie Wallander has done some pretty good videos showing how to do that. So what I've done here is I've set up, if you see on the screen, I've set up a bunch of trumpets. There's all sorts here. There's a, there's a bass trumpet couple of those and there's some D trumpets so there's six trumpets in all uh, and this is my standard little brass mix um, I've got bass trumpets in there just so I could extend the range slightly from the normal trumpets but uh, they're there for my kind of pop pop brass pop trumpet section um, no mutes of course if you go all the way down to the bottom on the right here you'll see that the pitch bend is set to plus and minus 12 and I've set up the rolly uh, control just go to the rolly dashboard that's on pitch bend 12 it's on multi on one to six, so I'm using six channels of polyphony on multi outputs. Um, I've got the dynamics set up. If we go to the top here, dynamics control on aftertouch and dynamic CT2 on velocity. Um, I've I've played a few times trying to bring in the the 74, the CC 74 to do some other things, and I've had some success. It does work. I'm having a play with that at the moment, so maybe I'll do another quick run on that. Um, something is important to note, um, it's not relevant really, but it's just good for me. I keep them all on the same screen. I don't use all the multiple windows in Wivy, just so I know where everything is. If you start using the multiple um, windows, you end up, I find I kept losing instruments. So I just have them all together here, and it means I can move more around in the room together and, uh, and move their positioning. So if I wanted to, for instance, uh, these three little chaps here, I could take over and give them a little blast, and these chaps I could take over here and give a little blast from over there. So I'll just do that for the time being. Um, it's a fairly dry room. This is the studio, the recording studio that they give you within Wivy, and I've left it in its default sizes. But I am adding a little touch over here of the um, the UAD um, EMT 140, uh, which is on my Apollo. So that's just running in the background. It's fairly short and fairly dry, but just gives it a little touch of, um, of plate reverb. Um, I just like that a little bit more to the, the reverbs that Wivy comes with for brassy stuff. Um, so those are the brass. Um, I, I'm not a great brass arranger, so I tend just to use um, a couple of notes at a time, play small chords, and, and just do some kind of poppy brass patterns. So just as an example, um, I'm just going to play a couple of notes, and you can see the kind of dynamic control you've got with the Rolly over maybe uh, just a control on a keyboard. So you can hear there, I've got some good dynamic control. I can do those lovely sforzando uh, and, and dynamics there. I can also do some fairly hard attacks. And you can hear it's got a little touch of... A little touch of reverb there. Um, the uh, bass trumpet just comes in on that F there. It sounds a bit annoying. So I may change the range of that bass trumpet so it comes in a bit, a bit 
lower or a bit higher. Um, but one thing you'll notice there is I really wasn't caring which trumpet was playing which bit. Uh, if you actually looked at the arrangement that I just played there, it wasn't a particularly glamorous piece of music, but you'll probably find that it was played by trumpet one, then trumpet three, then trumpet two. Um, I'm not worried about that. It's the sound I'm after. It's the fact I've got that control I'm after. If I was really paranoid about that, I would probably set all of my trumpets to trumpet one. So there was no uh, problem with that. So let's just try that. Let's try setting everything to trumpet one and seeing how that goes. So we'll delete those instruments. So I'll set up three trumpet ones, starting on MIDI channel one, no polyphonic mode, channel by instrument, and I'm not going to randomize any timings. So that's those three. I'll then put another three trumpets starting at one. In fact, I'll start these at four. Do that. So now I should have, there we are, two lots of trumpets. The first lot of trumpets over here are on channels one, two, and three. The second lot of trumpets are on here, which is channels four, five, and six. So if I'm just playing two notes at a time, I'm probably going to be playing mostly these trumpets. If I play more notes, I'm going to start bringing in the second group of trumpets. So let's just see how, how they sound. So you've got, some, you've got some good control there as well. Um, there's no bass in here. I haven't, I haven't set up any bass uh, sounds, but I think those trumpets work really well together. You notice there I, I didn't go back and correct the pitch bend. If I tried to do a pitch bend on these, it wouldn't work. So if you go down to the bottom over here, you'll see pitch bend is set back to minus 1 and plus 1. So set that back to minus 12 and plus 12, just so I'm a little bit more weavy compatible and a little bit more rolly compatible. And there we are. Okay, so something else that's quite interesting about this setup is if I go to the vibrato settings, uh, this window here, I've got pretty much vibrato set to zero. I mean, there's nothing, nothing particularly vibrato going on there. I don't really care about any of these settings, and um, I can turn that off completely, so there's no control of vibrato. So if I play a note, it just rings out until I take my key off. Uh, the key. Um, if I wanted to add vibrato, I just have to wiggle my finger. Which is brilliant when you're playing polyphonic lines, because you can play um, a couple of brass down the bottom. And then you can add a, a third line. That was a really horrific piece of music I just played there. But you can hear what you can do. You can... and add a little bit of uh, natural vibrato yourself, um, which is really nice because it adds a whole new dynamic flavor to these instruments. You're not just stuck with this um, set speed, fairly um, uniform vibrato on all the instruments. And often what you find is if you're layering multiple instruments with multiple vibratos, it all gets a little bit claggy. So without that, you've actually got some really, really nice little brass sections you can play there. And of course what you could do is you could double up your brass sections now with uh, some saxophones. Let's put in three alto saxophones, which is starting on four. And then while we're here, let's put, uh, let's not, let's put some tenor saxophones on, uh, starting on one. So you've now got a whole range of sax as well as brass. I'm just gonna change the pitch bend settings on all of these, so they're all the same. Um, it's a little bit frustrating to have to do this every single time, but that's just the way um, this is set up. I wish, I wish, I wish, and if Arnie Wallander ever hears this, I wish we could just set this and forget it and leave it on plus or minus 12 the whole time and have it hardwired into the instrument. Uh, maybe I'll drop him an email. Um, but there we are, that's now set up there, and we've got those instruments all plus and minus 12, and they're all set in the... Uh, in the room with us so uh, let's see what they sound like now just play some triads with all the the two horn sections
Okay, so they're being a bit blown out by the uh, the brass section, so we'll just highlight the saxes and bring them forward a little bit. Yeah, it's great. So you can really bring in some um, some really fab sounds. Of course, with the uh, the the Wibby stuff, you can also export different instruments on different outputs. So you can have a real play with the mix. So I hope that shows some polyphonic uh, stuff with Wibby and the uh, Rolly. <laughs>